Welcome to the Arturia Key Lab drum pad mapping video. We will try to cover all the different ways that you can map to FL Studio, which you can apply to any other DAW. For those that are just interested in one specific topic, we'll leave timestamps down below in the description. But first, I have some exciting news for Arturia users that use FL Studio. I've been in correspondence with Arturia. They are working on some scripts for FL Studio on their next update of the features. We have navigation in the channel rack, mixer and browser, DAW control command, the step sequencer control, native and Arturia plugin control, and visual feedbacks with the LED screen. Now, it integrates differently with every single DAW. I will leave those links in the description. So before we begin, please subscribe. It's free, it helps me out tremendously. And I'll assume that everybody that is here already has an Arturia KeyLab keyboard MIDI controller or any of their long line of products. And if you don't, I mean, what are you waiting for? What, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing right now? So here we are, NFL Studio. Right now, we are gonna program the KeyLab MIDI controller, keyboard, whatever you might have, to FL Studio. You do this by going to Options, MIDI Settings. And we'll start with the MIDI in. You're gonna want this KeyLab Essential 49 to one. Then up here, do the same thing on the MIDI output. Put that to one. The MIDI in two, which is Arturia Key Lab Essentials for me. You're gonna wanna go down to this drop down list, put Mackie Control Universal, put that to port two. Then on the output part, you're gonna wanna put this to two also. Now we're gonna head into the MIDI Control Center and we will map out these drum pads. All right, so here we are in the MIDI control center. Yours should look somewhat similar no matter what version of MIDI controller you have. Make a new template. So you go to this local templates down here. I already have some set up for myself that I use. You're gonna wanna hit this new button and just name it anything. I'm gonna name it anything. And anything is right here. Then for your drum pads, you're gonna wanna set each one of your pads to what note you want it to control. So this one's set up for like E1, you can actually change the color and leave all the other settings the same like that. Now for FL users, we're gonna go into my drum pad one. You're gonna want to program all your notes on, octave, on the octave of three. So like C3, D3, C sharp three, you have to be two octaves down. Otherwise, when you bring like a kick or anything you play, you're gonna be playing it on C7 and it's gonna make a pretty loud noise. I actually reached out to them and let them know that and they said, yes, this is the correct way of doing it. So on this drum pad template that I have here, I literally have it C3, then C sharp three, literally just starting from C up on all my different drum pads. Some of you guys might have the 16 pads, so it might be different for, for each one of you guys. And then just the rest of your controls, you can leave it the way it is because right now the way it integrates, you are able to control your faders on in FL Studio and then in the other dolls that I experienced also, but you can program it to whatever you would like it to be. Remember, after you have your drum pads and you've programmed everything the way you would like it, you're going to want to store two. Now remember the first two of your pads over here are already taken up by Analog Labs and your DAW, your specific DAW. The rest of the user banks are for you to program anything that you would like to program. So user one for me, I programmed my drum pads. You're gonna push store two. And if I press the store two button, it's gonna put this drum pads to user one. Don't forget to save your new template also. It's gonna remind you, but just don't forget to save it. Otherwise you'll come back in here and if you ever switch them back out, you will not have this template available for yourself. 
Now to the fun stuff. Let's go back into FL Studio. Let's make a beat. Let's use the FPC controller, which I'm sure this is how you're going to want to program your drum pads or do some sampling. Depends on what you're trying to do. If it's what genre of music that you might be interested in. A lot of stuff is on the grid or a little bit slightly off the grid. So using your drum pads actually might not work. But if you're in a live performance or if you're sampling, this is a great idea to use. Or if you're doing a genre of music like a lo-fi where being on the grid doesn't really matter, then it definitely will come in handy for you. Or you can just prep your drumming skills or whatever the case may be, timing. There's a lot of different things that this could become great for. But let's show a couple of examples. Try to show you how to integrate this best with the FPC controller. All right, so right now we're gonna load up an instance of FPC. Do that by hitting the plus sign right here. FPC is right here. I already have that instance already loaded. So you're gonna put it to track one. I'll show you why. Open it up and by default, let me put these headphones on real quick. We're gonna go up to presets and hit empty and then this is where you can program your own samples the templates that they already have here i mean if you want to mess around with them but to be honest they're kind of trash so i would just <laughs> load in your own samples i have a little bit of a beat that i took about five minutes before i started this video I'm just gonna try to do a couple like a vocal chop a shotgun sample a reverse cymbal because on this, I'm not going to actually like do my drum pads. This is a trap beat and it's kind of more on grid. So it wouldn't really make sense to kind of have that kind of style playing where it could be off a little bit off beat. Yes, you can quantize it. If that's what you're into and that's how you want to use it, you could use it however you would like. So let's just listen to a little bit of the song here that we're, we're going to be uh, doing. And it's just looping around and around and around. So you catch the vibe right there. So once you have this empty, you can literally just drag samples from over here. Here, let me move this real quick. Like, let's just say I wanted uh, an 808 and throw it in this bank right here. All right, now it's in bank one. And then I'm gonna grab something from my pre-escapes sample pack. For people that are looking for a free sample pack, I have a free sample pack that we just released for lo-fi. It's the free version. The premium version will be out soon. And I also have one for, for, uh, for trap music, which will be coming out soon also. So I'm just gonna grab anything for right now. Let's just use... Throw a snare there. Throw a bell there. We're just gonna throw anything. It doesn't even matter. Some wind chimes. Like I said, this sample pack right here is out of my lo-fi, my free lo-fi sample pack. So how do you program? Now imagine you, you had all these, all this filled up, and then you also have um, a bank too that you could also do. So you have all your samples filled up in this drum pad. Now how do you program it? with your keyboard is what you're asking, what you're here for. So I'm gonna show you that. Now remember on the presets before, on the templates before in the MIDI control center, I had the drum pad one and that's the one I used. I think you can use this thing. Doesn't matter if it's just even the default one. And I think maybe you're able to even use it at all. Matter of fact, let's just see if you can because I haven't even checked it yet. So I'm literally gonna hit map control, map select, sorry, sorry about that, map select. And we're in DAW. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come up to this little drop down menu thing. Map notes for entire bank. Now when you map notes for the FPC, you're mapping from the lowest left hand side all the way up. So it's best to map starting on your lower left. And you're just going to tap each button going up. And you'll notice in my case, I have I still have eight more slots. So I'm gonna use the next eight keys from the left on my controller over here and just tap them. And 
and we're mapped out. possibilities are endless. It's just going to integrate and map everything out. And it's simple and it's easy. And you could just play out your stuff. You can record this way too. So remember, you're going to arm the FPC because that's the channel that you're recording from. You're going to hit up here. It's going to ask you, you want to put the audio into Edison. We're just going to do notes and automation. All right. We're good to go, right? Let go. <laughs> so where's that being recorded to? Well, on the FPC, back up here, it's recorded those hits right there. And see, it has all the different things in one little spot. You also can record this in Edison right on the channel. We're gonna set this for one minute. I'm gonna take the record off off here. We're gonna put on input. So as soon as you press play, it'll start recording and it'll start playing at the same time. Hit the input, which is gonna be on play. There we go. So now you have your audio that you just recorded from the FPC controller using your Arteria Key Lab, whatever, whatever one that you have. And those are the heads that I was using. For those that are interested in learning more about the FPC controller in FL Studio, we are working on a tutorial video for this. As far as the Analog 5 integration with this keyboard, you're gonna have to check out my last video that talks about that so you can use all the faders, the knobs. So we're gonna get into this sampling example. All right, next we're gonna record this vocal chop. And we're gonna record that vocal chop real quick. That's good enough. Open up FPC again. We're just gonna drag this right here. And now we're gonna do a reverse symbol. Now we're gonna record this reverse symbol. There we go. Got the reverse symbol. Gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna highlight the section I want. I'm gonna play it real quick just to double check. All right, I like it. We're going to drag it on top of that crash because so I thought we would be able to pull in reverse, but it didn't. But this time it's going to go, it's going to pull in reverse. So just make sure you're connected to the FBC like this. Let's play. Let's do our sampling. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more, that sample. So that sample is right. I'm gonna just turn it down because it's definitely loud. Just double check it. And then I'm gonna check that, that crash. Do I have that layered? Actually, I probably have this layered. I do. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just turn this off, shut this off like this. And then our final sample that we had was that shotgun. All right, let's get it. And you could just sample it out however you would like. And that's just a quick, quick example of how you can use this. All right, so we made it to the end. Let me remind you that we stream every Wednesday night on Twitch at midnight. We do viewer song submission all night, beat tutorials, how to, plug-in reviews. We just have a good time and a great chat. For those that are interested in the FPC controller full tutorial video that will be coming out really soon, don't forget, we have that free lo-fi sample pack, which is part of the Beat Battles. Check everything out, and the link will be in the description on our website. Here's the final beat preview. This is before the final mix and master. Lego.